Good morning, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting for just a couple of minutes. And uh, I welcome everyone to today's session on developing functional language skills. Cambridge University Press has been always been a front runner in helping learners build brighter futures. And we're equally excited to be part of this session being hosted by PG uh, Government Girls College, Sector 42, Chandigarh. Uh, the session will be taken by Dr. Deepthi Gupta, who's the head department of English and Culture Studies at Punjab University, Chandigarh who has a vast experience in helping learners and trainers honing their English language skills. And we are sure the session will be full of learning. The session would be followed by a 10 to 15 minute session, a mark for the Q&A. Regarding this session, with a small but a useful presentation by my colleague Priya Kapoor, who heads the product and publishing for ELT at Cambridge University Press India. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Bindu Dogra, who is the principal at PG Government Girls College Sector 42 Chandigarh. Thank you, ma'am, for giving this an opportunity to be a part of this session. And I now request you to please address the audience and take the thing forward. Thank you. Thanks, Vinay. On behalf of PGGCC42 Chandigarh, I welcome you all to this session on developing functional language skills. Such in initiatives are always important to stay abreast of latest developments in the field and give all of us a chance to benefit from the vast experience of the speakers. I would like to thank Cambridge University Press in supporting us in organizing this webinar, which I am sure would be full of learning. At PG Government College for Girls Sector 42 Chandigarh, we believe that learning never stops in life and interactions like these give us a chance to continue Learning. Soft skills have gained importance in all spheres, the confidence to start working in, inter in international English speaking environment. So let me take this opportunity to welcome and introduce Professor Deepti Gupta, Chairperson, Department of English and Culture Affairs and Dean, Alumni Relation, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Dr. Gupta is a renowned name in the field of English communication and it would be an honor to listen to her on today. I would also like to thank her for accepting our invitation to take this session today. Besides, I would request all participants to be attentive throughout the session and use all the learnings from today's session in their lives. So without any further delay, let us begin today's session with Dr. Deepti Gupta and be ready for anything with English as a life skill. Thank you. Am I audible to everyone? Okay. Audio issue. Yes. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, good to see all of you here this morning. And uh, we are talking about an, an important aspect of education and career, which is our functional language skills. Now, it looks like a bit of a misnomer when one says functional and language, because obviously language is meant for a certain function. It's meant to perform a certain function. So why does one need to state the obvious? Why does one need to talk about uh, the obvious? And why does one need to say that communication means sharing? That is because sometimes students, learners get the impression that you said something, done. No, it's not done. Till you get the feedback that your information has been said successfully. Which is why the word communication comes from the Greek communicare, which means to share. And sharing within a community. Now, in terms of community, it usually implies a group of people living in one place, and 
sharing a language because language is the code of communication language is what gives us the tools to share what we want to share now in these times uh, when we are all supposed to be at home and we communicate in the virtual sphere we realize the importance of face to face communication the way your message is conveyed face to face communication is totally different from the way it is conveyed in virtual communication because in face to face communication body language takes up 50% of the message the tone of voice takes up 40% of the message words take up 10% of the message so in face to face communication a lot of the meaning is conveyed through body language and tone of voice which is why in virtual communication some people find it difficult to convey messages and which is why in virtual communication words and tone of voice become more important and the component of body language is reduced now one needs to be very very careful while using language one needs to be self reflective you need to understand that if you tell your friend oh you are looking wonderful today or you say you are wonderful today there is a difference in the meaning so a tiny nuance a tiny change of tone can change the meaning of your message or if a teacher comes to class and says oh friends we are going to do a very uh, interesting lesson today obviously the learners are going to get the opposite message so remember friends whenever you are using like you are communicating you need to be conscious of all the aspects of the message you need to be aware of all the aspects of the language you use and when i talk about the language we use normally linguists speak in terms of knowledge about language and knowledge about the world so today our focus is knowledge about language because we are talking about the functional language skill how and why do you use language for performing certain functions for you in the world and the primary function is communication because that is where everything starts if we are talking about success in the examination it begins with your communication in the examination hall if you are talking about success in your career it begins with your your communication in your place of work and where the place of work is concerned you need to take a few decision in the decisions in the very beginning what is going to be the language of your profession what language are you going to use at the place of work because then it becomes your responsibility to be functionally competent there i go on you going to be quite sick and tired of the word functional by the time this session ends so your functional competence in the language of your choice which language are you going to use for your career and i would like to make it very clear at the outset that as a linguist i am not for or against any language often when i go to places to lecture i must this question uh, you don't like our mother tongue you are not in favor of our mother tongue friends it's not a matter of being in favor or being against any language as a person of linguistics i appreciate every language because every language performs the function of communication every language is functional by nature which is why it is a living language and not a dead language so you need to take a decision which is the language that you are going to use in your profession which is the language you are comfortable with at home which is the language you use with your facebook friend 
or your WhatsApp friend. So we are taking these decisions all the time. And whenever we are using a language, there will always be two aspects to our knowledge. Knowledge about the language, knowledge about the world. And the knowledge about the world obviously has a lot in common, but it also changes according to the culture you belong to. So when we talk about knowledge about language, it has four aspects. There is the linguistic competence, growth competence, sociolinguistic competence, and the strategic competence. I'm going to define them all for you one by one so that you are sure of your territory. Because you've got to understand that functional competence in a language is not just going to come from the skies one day and you'll pluck it out of thin air. It has to be cultivated. It has to be created. And for that, you need to be aware. You need to be conscious. What am I doing? What kind of an impact will my action have on my competence? So be conscious of these four kinds of competence. The first is discourse competence. Discourse competence refers to the ability of a learner to use the new language in both spoken and written discourse. You see, discourse means the fabric of the text of communication, give and take of language. So can you is it in both spoken and written? Number two, can you combine grammar and meaning in different ways to speak and write? Because also remember that the spoken form of the language is always going to be different from the written form. Where you can just pat your friend on the back or hit your friend on the back and say, hey, how are you boss? If you're writing a letter to someone. You say, I hope this finds you well. You don't say, how are you boss? So spoken and written discourse will always be different. Will always have its own features. And also, uh, you need to combine the elements of the language into a sort of web. If you are going to use them efficiently. You're going to put them together. And this ability, this ability for discourse competence is also what we teachers often call fluency. How fluent is a child? So remember friends, when you are using language at the right pace and you are able to put in your words and grammatical structures, convey meaning without pausing, without stammering, that means you have good discourse now, linguistic competence refers to the way you use the rules of the language. This includes the right and wrong, all those picks and crosses that you see on your assignment. Or when your teacher says, uh, you need to say, may I, if you are making a request, not shall I. So all these come under the territory of linguistic competence. This is often called accuracy. And as teachers, we need to balance fluency and accuracy for our learners. And if as learners, you are conscious of fluency and accuracy, then definitely you are self-autonomous learners. You are learners who can manage your own language competency. The third is sociolinguistic competence. So, so far, we've referred to how you put together the elements of a language, which is discourse. And then we refer to how right or wrong you are. In competence, now we turn to sociolinguistic. When you meet your principal early in the morning, you don't say, hey dude, you're looking good. Say good morning ma'am, how are you doing today? So the use of proper language forms is sociolinguistic.
when you go for a uh, job interview, for example, the knock can you say, may I come in? Normally when you go home, you don't know, may I come in, your mother's likely to find you. But if you do that, so in every situation, your sociolinguistic competence is going to change. So the use of proper language form, this will depend upon who are the users of the language, what is the situation, what is the purpose of the interaction, how appropriate you are in using language. How well do you mind your P's and Q's in using language? And the fourth is strategic competence. Strategic competence means, for instance, you are saying something and you don't have the right words, but you manage to convey your message by using synonyms or by using sign language. So you use both verbal and non-verbal communication to compensate for your lack of knowledge in the sociolinguistic, linguistic and the discourse. So you are smart. A person with good strategic competence is a smart user of language. Do you find ways of compensating for any weaknesses that you perceive in the way you use language? So this would be called strategic competence. What are the strategies that you manage to use? Now, once upon a time in a language classroom, we were all teaching and learning language as a structured system of grammatical patterns. You had the definition of a verb, types of verb, definition of a noun, types of nouns, types of clauses, what is the difference between a phrase, a clause, and a sentence, all that blah blah. You did all that theory in the classroom. But there was a problem there. At the end of the day, the the whole system of education learned that we are actually producing students who know the rules of a language but cannot use the language. They know about language, but they don't know the language, which is what signaled the switch from the traditional approach to the communicative approach to language. Was, this began somewhere in the 1970s, but actually it took off only after the liberalization of the Indian economy, when everybody realized that you cannot just close the doors of the mind to the languages of the world. You need to know them if you want to participate in global, global trade and commerce, in the global professions. So that is when the communicative approach came, where the focus was on learning as communication. Language items were selected on the basis of the needs of the learners. Sequencing was according to the content, meaning and interest, and not just on linguistic grounds. And the degree of coverage was as per needs analysis. The degree of coverage was as per needs analysis. The view of the language earlier was that it is a unified entity, meaning you have only one English that has fixed grammatical patterns and that has a core of basic words. Now we understand that you have so many varieties of English, for example, just as you have so many varieties of Hindi. And you may be using a variety in a different context. For example, you have the academic variety for the classroom. You have the professional variety for your career. You have the variety of management English for the business management field. You have the variety of scientific English for the scientists. So now we understand that language does not have just a single fixed core, but language is flexible in nature and it may have so many varieties and versions at a time. Similarly, where earlier we were fixated on the bookish and formal language, 
today we are more focused on the language that learners need outside the class which is why today there is a shift from accuracy to accuracy and appropriateness can a learner convey meaning the uh, the sentence that the learner produces may not be 100% correct but can it convey the meaning is the learner able to say what he or she wants to and because of all these changes friends the teacher is no longer a god on mount olympus it's not that we were not happy to be that but today a teacher is a participant in the learning process a teacher is today a member of the team more of a friend a team member a facilitator and a manager so we moved from the product approach to language the language teaching where the teacher takes the package of language and gives it to the learner to a process approach where the functional competence of the learner is built up in the classroom itself with the kinds of opportunities you give to the learner with the kinds of exposure tasks and activities that you give to the learner so you've got to be aware of these four kinds of competence that make up the functions that language performs for you number 1 number 2 within functional language use from my experience i have narrowed down these nine areas that you can look out for in case you feel that you are not able to use language the way you need to use it the first is be aware of the four skill listening speaking reading writing unless and until these four are developed well and equally you will not be a proficient language user and today not difficult at all once upon a time you needed huge language labs and lots of expenditure in order to get practice in that then you have so many apps that work for you that you can use from the comfort of your home even on your mobile just get registered for any language app and that's it i believe cambridge university press also has an excellent app and you know what the beauty of these apps is where in a classroom you have a mixed lot of learners with mixed abilities and many times learners who are less proficient remain silent or they remain like passive partners when you use an app the first thing the app does is to fix your level of proficient that this is your level these are the kind of tasks and activities you should be doing i'm sure uh, when later on you listen to everybody speak cambridge university press must be having some trial or some kind of options where you can use the app for a while and see if it suits but i would strongly recommend use some app to get all around practice in listening speaking reading and writing first language use friends is like cycling the more you do it the better you get at it if you want to learn cycling you don't go boating you go cycling so similarly when you want to use a language well you use a language and that is how you become proficient in it the resources these days not a problem at all as i told you got so many online courses got so many websites you got all these apps and you have practically a hundred books published every day that promise to give you profession just remember that you have to see what kind of language you require what is the level of proficiency you require for your domain this is all a functional ecosystem the friends with whom you speak the people with whom you interact the apps you use the time you spend it all creates a functional ecosystem in which you need to balance the accuracy versus the appropriateness the fluency versus the accuracy 
need to be aware of the format. What is the format of an application you write to the police? If you write a love letter to your girlfriend or boyfriend in the format of an application, at the end of your relationship, you don't wear stilettos to the football field. You don't wear sneakers to a formal party. So then why would you use slang in an examination hall? Or why would you use the examination uh, hall language to talk to your mother? You're aware of all these things. So be aware of the kind of format you need at a particular point of time. Be aware of the standard language. And remember friends, for the standard language, you need just around 1500 words. So forget about all those long word lists. Forget about the agent who says, pay me rupees 20,000 for this word list and cram it up and you will have a vocabulary. That doesn't give you a vocabulary. Words are like friends. The more you be with them, the better you get at your vocabulary. You don't get friends by just writing down their names on a piece of paper. You get friends by interacting with them, by living with them. And remember, language is to be used to express, not to impress. Your words, your structures are meant to convey a meaning. They are meant to perform a function. They are not meant to impress others or they are not meant to undermine what others are. You are just expressing yourself. Okay, I'll wind up here with a big thank you. And in case uh, you want to get in touch with me, I'm sure uh, CUB will be happy to share my email with you. And we can now go into the question answers. Thank you very much for your patient. Thank you so very much, Deepi, ma'am. It was a wonderful session by you and such a thoughtful, informative, not many insights that we must have received in this session. I hope the participants are equally delighted like me today. So, dear participants, we would definitely be having a question and answers round because we could see a lot many questions, lovely questions coming from your side. Before that, I would request my colleague and the publishing head from Cambridge University Press, Ms. Priya Kapoor, to share a bit about CCA, which is Cambridge Communication App, as briefed a little by Dr. Deepti Gupta also in her session. So Priya, most welcome. Thank you very much, Richa, and thank you, Dr. Gupta. Um, I'm sure our participants found the insights very useful. Hi everyone, I'm Priya and today I will run you through one of Cambridge University Press's brand new offering called Cambridge Communication App. So let's get started. All right, great. Um, I'd like to take on from the last point of Dr. Gupta's presentation, which is express and not impress. That is what functional language is meant for. We indeed know that English enables and empowers, but to effectively communicate, we need not see the language English as a tool for power, instead a tool for communication. And I hope you would agree with that. Communication needless to say, is very highly regarded in the adult world. As you do know, I'm sure. It also features in essential competencies and skills that are required for 21st century learning. The modern workplace, as we know, is increasingly globalized and competitive, and it demands of its workers communicating with customers, colleagues, and partners as everyday occurrence. Consequently, employers are on the lookout for employees who don't just have formal qualifications and traditional skills intact, but are also adept in communication. Why is that? So they are able to thrive in a global work environment. With global economic realities driving continuous change in the workplace these days, candidates are expected to navigate it well, which is the skill 
of communication. It is a skill that requires interaction with individuals and organizations from nationalities and cultural backgrounds, which may be very different from our own. And it's quite interesting to know that India is one of the countries that had the highest levels of business related interaction overseas. So it should tell you how well prepared we must be when it comes to communication. We can't ever talk enough about how critical communication skills are. Um, well, I'd actually go a step ahead and say that this is one skill that we need to continuously work on and for which we never really get a completion certificate. It is with this requirement in mind of equipping our learners with the most important skill that we are super excited to be sharing information about our new learning solution called the Cambridge Communication app with you now. Cambridge Communication app is the latest offering from Cambridge that aims to refine your English language skills in a fun and engaging way. Before I proceed to talk about the app, we'd like you to know that we are ever so conscious of needs of learners like you, and we have taken utmost care to ensure we bring you what you need. Today's walkthrough of what this app offers to you will help you see how this maps to your learning requirement. First, let us look at some quick information about the app along with a quick taster of it. Well, to make learning a great experience for all learners like you, uh, we've built in all the possible flexibility that we possibly could. To start with, this is a self-learning app so you can learn and practice anytime, anywhere, you want to and you possibly can. You have the flexibility of learning English at home or with, if you're on the move. So what does the app offer you? Now, um, it provides to you not just learning content, but practice content and for two language purposes. If you're interested in business English, it offers you pacey topic-based learning with comprehensive coverage of language and skills for business and work life, both. But what if you want to learn English for social interactions? Then we have you covered as well. There's learning and practice content for general English too. What's more, actually each course, which is the business English course and the general English course, as you see on my screen now, is available at three graded levels, foundation, basic and intermediate. As you see on my screen, there are three levels for foundation, basic and intermediate for business English and similar three levels for general English. Each level, which is foundation or basic or intermediate, comes with 25 learning units and 25 tests. So the total business English course comprises of 75 units and 75 tests. The general English uh, module comprises again of 75 units and 75 tests, making it a proposition of a total of 150 learning units and 150 practice tests that are made available to you through this app. The learning content for each unit is of about 15 to 20 minutes of seat time. Now for the uninitiated, seat time basically means the average time that you will take as a learner to complete one unit. You also get, obviously, like I mentioned before, 150 practice tests, and each test is of five to seven minutes seat time. Here are some screenshots from the app, and we'll show you a very short taster of the app as well in the screens to follow. But here is what one of the courses looks like on the app. This is the Business English course and you see some units of three levels of the course here as mentioned earlier. And there are similar three levels for general English too. Now here's a taster of the app. Um, I'll take you through some short videos to see what it is like to go through a learning unit in the app. Let's look at some content from foundation. This is Business English Foundation that I'm presenting to you now. So we are looking at a topic called meeting and greeting people. This is in a chatbot format. So what looks like to you on screen is very much like, um, you know, your WhatsApp probably that you use to chat with your friends. It is in a similar fashion that you will 
learn English and you will be tested for the skills that you learn. Let's have a look. Great, so that was a very quick demo of what a session on the app looks like. Great, so now let us look at some features of this app and how they benefit you as a learner. Um, did you just notice that the app provides to you learning content in very short bursts? Now, we are not just limited to that. Practice content too is in the form of very short tests that you see. This is basically based on the premise of bite-sized learning. Long sessions of self-learning are actually passe these days. And the idea is to provide small learning units with just the necessary amount of information to help you achieve a certain learning goal. 25 short units in each level cover all the important listening, speaking, reading and writing skills for business or general English, depending on the course you choose to go through. There are also embedded grammar and vocabulary inputs, plus some caution notes. Now, what are caution notes? Caution notes are basically small notes to alert you to common mistakes, which also tell you how to avoid those. Also, if you have noticed in the taster or the demo that I showcased to you just a while ago, the approach that is employed is communicative. Through the chatbot methodology, you as a learner are presented with contexts that you are very likely to encounter in real work related scenarios or situations in social life. These inputs are very brief, like you just saw, and are also to the point. As you chat through a unit, you are taken through language functions, notions, and various structures that are required to navigate through such situations. You progress through the learning scenarios seamlessly. And if you again noticed, the sessions are not didactic and they focus on the elements important for you to be able to communicate effectively. Also, you can repeat a unit or test as many times as you like. Whether it is the foundation, the basic or the intermediate level you're going through, you will encounter level appropriate functions of language. So everything that you see, that you learn, will be appropriate to the level that you're pursuing, whether it's foundation, whether it's basic, or whether it's intermediate. You will see that the functions of language, the text type, the vocabulary, the themes, and the complexity of structures, along with loads of examples, are all level appropriate. We'll try to give you as many examples as we possibly could to make your learning even more relevant to real life communication. 
Um, we are sure that you will find the content relevant, interesting and gripping. And the content has also loads of digital learning objects like images. There are plenty of audios to give you practice in listening and speaking and also examples. And uh, obviously there's the voice recording feature also that is for reflective learning. So you can listen to the audio to the example audio, then you can record your own voice and then you can listen back to what you said so that you can juxtapose it with the expert voice and compare uh, where all you need to improve. The navigation, as you did see through the app, of course, is pretty intuitive. Let's quickly have a glimpse of the themes from the Business English course. I will let you have some time to look through this. It's a detailed grid that you're looking at. This particular grid is for the Business English course and the three levels, foundation, basic and intermediate, one after the other. These are the various themes that we cover for Business English. So you should be able to see that it's a pretty comprehensive course as far as functions of the language are concerned. So it can help you in learning how to understand directions, how to leave a message, what to say on a client visit, what do you say to your supervisor or to your manager when you take time off work? Uh, what is it like to work in production, in sales, in marketing, in editorial, in any other field? Um, we've tried to cover as many um, functions of an organization covered here. We also talk about entrepreneurship. What do you say when you travel abroad for business? How do you present at a meeting? What do you talk when you have a meeting with clients or with customers abroad? How do you write business mails, correspond with customers? There's plenty to look at as far as business English is concerned. Now, I would also like you to have a quick glimpse at the themes that are covered in the general English course. Here, if you see, we cover everything that you would require to talk about in your social situations or situations which are beyond the workplace. So you can talk about getting help, you can talk about making requests, how to apologize, how to talk to people at a gym, what to, what to say when you have a problem with a certain machine at your home, how do you speak in a local market, um, what do you say when you're meeting your old time friends after a long, long time? Um, how do you compliment somebody when they're dressed really well? Um, what should you say when you're not able to do something or say something and maybe also apologize? How you introduce yourself? Um, how do you, what do you say when you preempt something that somebody is about to say? Um, talking about nature, talking about having a good day, about a shopping list, talking about fitness. So most of the topics that you would, uh, scenarios, sorry, that you would encounter in everyday life are covered here through the general English course. Now, going about learning with the app, I would say is as easy as pie. For now, some content for business English, which is 10 units from each level, is available to you and free of charge until the end of this month. So you should grab this opportunity to explore the app, learn and practice. You will get for now in this free version, you get about 15 to 20 hours of content. Please feel free to share this app with your friends and batchmates and encourage them to take advantage of this. The app is available on Google Play Store to download from. You go to the Google Play Store, type in Cambridge Communication and simple, you have it on your mobile. Also, as much as we value you as learners benefiting from the app, we would love to hear from you on it. Um, well, why is that? So this can help us continuously improve the offering and make it even better aligned to your learning needs. We would uh, want you to feed us back with your views, ideas, and suggestions. And doing it is fairly simple. So once you log into your, to the app, this is what it will look like, what you see on my screen. 
you just need to go to the share feedback section from the main menu and give us feedback. I will show you a very short video of how to give us feedback. So you go to the main menu on the top left and you see share feedback at the bottom. And this is the form that pops up. We would love to hear from you on what this app is like, how this benefits you and other things that we would like captured through this form. So we hope that you enjoyed going through the session and you're all geared up and excited to experience this novel way of learning. Thank you for your attention to this. And you can also register for our upcoming webinars in the series on the 18th and the 20th of August, which is this month. We will share the links in the chat and follow up mail will also be sent for you to register. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Priya, for this such a lovely insight and exciting journey about Cambridge Communication app. And it seems equally exciting to know that this is absolutely free till August 31st for all the participants who are present over here. So I have seen a number of questions coming up, which seems that the session is really going very interactive. There are a lot many people who have asked wonderful questions. We'll try to take up as many questions as possible. And for that, I would request Dr. Deepti Gupta, as well as Ms. Priya Kapoor, to please be there when the questions would be there asked to you. And the questions would be related to communication app for Priya and related to today's session on communication skills to Dr. Deepti Gupta. So here, most of the questions are already answered by Dr. Deepti Gupta. So thank you so very, ma so very much, ma'am, for your uh, such a quick response to the audience. Welcome. Also, there are a few questions which are asked by one person, but could be useful for most of the audience here. So I would like to repeat those questions, even though you have already answered them, so that we could answer as many viewers possible today. So the one general question which comes up to the audience, by the audience, is how can we develop our vocabulary skills in our daily life? Also the pronunciation. So ma'am, Deepti ma'am, how would you like to answer this question? Uh, could you repeat the question please or is it there in the Q&A? So that is the question from Q&A which says that how can we develop our vocabulary as well as pronunciation skills? Yeah. Like I have mixed the two yeah. questions together. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know for vocabulary and pronunciation, uh, the sad part is that uh, there is no kind of uh, textbook that you can pick up and mark. Earlier on, pronunciation was felt to be a matter of learning the phonetic symbols, going to the dictionary, studying the dictionary, and then learning the correct pronunciation. These days, pronunciation is very, very simple. You just need to click on a word and you get the pronunciation, number one. Number two, we often don't understand that this sequence, listening, speaking, reading, writing, is extremely important. A person who is not an active listener will not be a proficient speaker. So it all begins with listening. If you really want to master pronunciation, listen to the language as much as you can. Listen to different kinds of speaker people from different countries, people using different accents, and keep self-checking. Do you understand what they are saying? For instance, uh, on the net these days, we have so many exercises. The Cambridge app has so many exercises to deal with listening comprehension. Do those exercises. Keep cross-checking. Do you understand what people are saying? For example, do you understand the difference between embarrass and embrace? Do you understand the difference between shout and sheet? So these are tiny matters, but they are actually creating the whole structure of the language in your mind. There was a question in the panel that said, how important is grammar? We've got to understand here that in today's context, in the light of what we know about the brain, and the cognitive process of language learning. The word grammar is no longer restricted to that book which used to bash you up in school. 
that got you all those ticks and crosses in your notebook and meant that you lost such a lot of uh, such a large number of marks in the examination grammar refers to the structure that you create in the mind chomsky calls it universal grammar when you learn a language and when you learn more languages you keep adding to that structure so pronunciation and vocabulary are not areas where cramming or rote learning is going to help you for vocabulary there's a very very simple strategy watch out for the new words to read or listen to every day jot them down somewhere maybe even in your mobile as notes end of the day or any time in the day look at those words what is the meaning of those words what is the pronunciation of the words bingo you are ready for vocabulary and pronunciation this the small exercise if you are integrating listening speaking reading writing there's no way you can miss out on a good vocabulary and good pronunciation habits how much do you read in a day ask yourself that question because when you read you are reinforcing all you listened to and you are preparing for speaking and writing remember listening and reading are the consumer skills where you are consuming speaking and writing are the production skills where you are producing so if there is no input how are you going to give output the output will come only when you have certain input all right i hope that answers your question yeah uh, should we go to the next question sure ma'am thank you so very much yeah. and in between there are certain questions coming up about the certification so dear audience i would like to tell you that definitely you will be receiving the certification for this webinar for that you are requested to please be with us till the session ends so that we could have multiple questions and then we would also guide you the gateway for going to avail the certification so now the next question again to deepthi ma'am this question has been asked by mohammad aslam and uh, again by one of the attendees so i am mixing up two questions together there they say that uh, how do we do with the grammar thing because the grammar is seems to be sometimes very important for india that you have to be particular in your writing skills finally the class 10th teacher says the same thing that how do we improve grammar in these students because when they write up they make major mistake and it is very very difficult for us to go back to the basic rules in teaching the grammar so is there any short way for teaching grammar and whether it is so important in the indian market yeah you see again i go back to the way i define grammar that grammar is not just not just that book grammar is the set of structures that you are building up in the mind of your learner while the learner is using the language so for that the integration of the four skills is important and most important don't teach grammar in isolation don't try to tell them about direct and indirect speech all the rules etc rather show them two passages one in direct one in indirect so then the difference between the passages also tell them the functions of those passages that is when they will actually understand grammar instead of so i would suggest that you should go the uh, the style of teaching that helps your learners understand the function of each grammatical item rather than just the theoretical definition or the rules because the rules are what put off learners but usage showing them how the usage is going to change the meaning that is important and remember these days we don't talk about descriptive grammar we don't have right or wrong we have what is appropriate and what is more appropriate for in the examination all you have accurate and inaccurate that is a different set of parameters altogether we got to understand that the grammar that we are giving our learners should not be restrictive it should not make them afraid to open their mouths which is why integrate that grammar with their everyday life and the meaning they create yaar cha this is next 
Thank you so much, ma'am. So the next question is for Priya about the Cambridge Communication app. We have attendees named Priya as well, Priya and Kanika asking a similar question, that how this app helps us in improving our communication skills, especially the speaking skills. Okay, so uh, the app basically provides you inputs for all the four skills, which is listening, speaking, reading, writing, along with inter intermittent inputs on vocabulary and grammar as well. It gives you a lot of option for practice. Typically, uh, you know, speaking and listening, which are the two major modes, most sought after communication skills. Um, for listening, you get to hear plenty of audios through all these sessions that you uh, take up within the app. Uh, you don't just have the option to listen to them once, but you can obviously repeat them and listen to them as many times as you'd like to notice correct grammar structure, vocabulary used, pronunciation, tone, etc. that you might want to watch out for. And of course, uh, apart from that, um, you know, it also gives you a lot of option for practicing speaking, which is by way of the voice recording feature. So the voice recording feature allows you to record your own voice and listen back to it. So this is called reflex, uh, reflective learning. So reflective learning basically implies that you reflect on how you spoke, what you said, what the contents of your speech were, etc. So you can um, listen to what you recorded. You can compare the expert voice or the correct audio. And um, that is how you can figure out where you need to improve. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know, there are inputs that are given on writing as well and reading is taught passively. So, you know, it's like reading a novel. So let me give you an example here. So when you read a novel, when you read something nonfiction, uh, you don't always necessarily pick up a dictionary, perhaps to, you know, look up the meaning for each word. What you actually do is that you go through it and in the context of what you're reading, you help yourself understand, uh, you know, meanings of words, uh, you help understand, help yourself understand, uh, you know, what a certain structure stands for, you know, whether it's for apologizing or whether it's for saying something or whether it's for making a request. So um, here also in the app, um, you know, you read and you acquire quite a bit of passive skills there. I hope that answers your question. And of course, you're going to try that app out uh, for free until the end of this month and see what it is like for yourself. We'd love to hear from you on the app as well through the feedback form. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this question, again, to Dr. Deepi Gupta, and this question relates to me very much because it talks <laughs> about the jargons that we use daily and also about the WhatsApp chatting. So these days, you know, ma'am, the youth of today, what do they do? Instead of writing as, let me, let me do this job. I want to do something, I want to do this. So they just, they are a little confused like when they talk to any professional bodies, be they trainers, their teachers, principals, or their job colleagues. And somewhere when they talk to their friends, they mince the words. Like I said, I will say, let me instead of let me. Wanna instead of wanna, want to do something. So how do, how do we say that? How the audience takes such words in general? Is it good to use such, such jargons or you feel that it should be avoided? So people want to know your opinion as well in this. Uh, you know, for this, there's a very, very simple benchmark. Again, the word function. What do you want the language to do for you? If you're linking up with a friend on Facebook, you don't want your friend to think that you are being officious or you being formal. On the other hand, if you're talking to your teacher, you're not very close to that teacher, you're formal with that teacher. You don't want to use any words that convey informality. When you're talking to your parents, you want to be affectionate, you want to feel close. So accordingly, you would be varying the way you use
Dear audience, there is a slight network issue. I would just request you to please have a little patience and ma'am will be back right away for the answers to you. Thank you. So we'll just wait for a few more seconds. Meanwhile, uh, Priya, are you there so that I can ask you a question? Yes, yeah, sure, Richa. Okay, so the audience wants to know that, do we get some help on the reading comprehension part also in this application? Right, so uh, we are afraid, um, you know, it is not about lengthy reading comprehension questions that we cater to here, but of course there is plenty of exercises available um, in through the app uh, for reading comprehension. So there are small bits and pieces that people read and then they comprehend try to comprehend what the correct answer is, or for example, whether you know, a word was used appropriately, whether a sentence structure is grammatically correct, uh, you know, uh, what could be a better structure. Sometimes you know, the options that are provided are all correct, but it is for learners to see which is the most appropriate of the, uh, out of those presented. So uh, reading comprehension, yes, it very much caters to it uh, as far as uh, the functions of the language are concerned. Um, but the kind of reading comprehension where you have 150, 250, 350, um, you know, word long passages, that is something that we are not catering to in the app because the idea is for us to enable learners to speak and communicate effectively primarily. But of course, like I mentioned earlier, there are inputs given on all the four skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Um, again, I would suggest that you <coughs> the app. Uh, there is plenty of content available, about 15 to 20 uh, hours of uh, content, and it will enable you to see the kind of questions and uh, the kind of content that we have up there. And we really, really hope and are almost sure that you'll find that beneficial. Okay. Thank you so much for your answer. I hope that answers to the query of many, many people over here. So do we have, ma'am, networks are there, I believe? Just yeah. Oh, there was a little bit of a network scare. No problem, ma'am. <laughs> audience is waiting to hear you. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about uh, this whole idea, you know, of using varieties of the language. Uh, do you know that once upon a time we used the word English, and today we say Englishes. How and why did that happen? That's an interesting story, because uh, to begin with. Since English was the language of colonialism, it reached across the world and it began to take up words from all the languages of the world. And even after, uh, in the post-colonial era, countries found it convenient to stay with English. And by and by, they all evolved a different way of using English. But all these ways of using English were comprehensible to users across the world. So similarly, we have these many ways of using the language in our daily lives. There's a way in which we use a lot of slang. We may even use, we may even code switch a lot. For example, in North India, you find people using Hindi and Punjabi words along with English. Or in South India, you find People using constructions from Tamil and Malayalam when they speak English. So these are typical features of regions, which is why the word English is. So what does the language user need to do? The user needs to be conscious. Where am I using for what function? And that fluency of ease is going to come when you use it a lot. For instance, you are in a conference with your friends while you are delivering your paper. You don't keep shouting out to your friends, hi, how are you? That happens much later. So you get used to a way of moving smoothly among these various varieties of the language. And you get used to switching up here. It's as if you have all these files safely stored in your mind and you access them as and when you require them. So the simplest answer to all your questions is practice, practice,
practice. As I told you earlier, want to be a good cyclist, you're not going to go and do horse riding. <clears throat> you're going to do cycling. You're going to be practiced a lot. So that's what matters. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. See, this is a beautiful insight again. Practice makes the man perfect and so yeah. does the woman also. Yeah. So I think we all need to start this very day that let's learn a little more in English and let's yes. do a little more of English. And now we have a junction of CCA as well. So, uh, yeah. So one nice question from Ritika, and this question says again to Dr. Deepi Gupta, what is sequencing in language means? So, if I am I right, it is about LSRW she's talking about, or maybe you can use your own inside why she says the sequencing word. What is sequencing in language and how important is it for communicating effectively? That's the question. Sequencing, if you notice, that sequencing is an activity that we perform in all spheres of life. For instance, if you're you boiling an egg, you take water, you put a little bit of salt, and then the egg, and put it on the flame. You don't put the egg straight on the flame. There's a sequence to it. And you don't add the water later after the flame has been put on. Similarly, listening, speaking, reading, writing, skills have a sequence. Similarly, in language, when you say, you like a cup of tea, you don't say, like would you be of cup, a sequence to it. So, everything is arranged sequentially, and that is how it produces meaning. We all agreed that you'll have a cur, you'll have a er, and you'll have a ter, and you have the word cat. That sequence was agreed. So this is how language creates meaning to sequence. And by and by, then your cognitive processes also learn that sequence. And they begin to perform it flawlessly. That is the important thing. Yes, Richa. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Now, this is the last question that we are taking for today. And thereafter, we would just guide you about your certification process also. So this question is from Nilofar Mansuri. And she says that, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I have a doubt in using English language. Which English is useful? Is it UK accent or US accent? And it becomes a problem also while teaching to our kindergarten students that do we teach them in the UK accent or the US accent? And so every school is following their own, uh, own ways of teaching the accent to the students or the phonetics to the students. So what should we follow in that case? Yeah. Well, over at this point of time, uh, we are caught between the earlier practice where we said that British English is the variety for the world and US English, no, that English is not the academy. Okay. Now we are at a point of time where varieties are a continuum. At one end, you have the prescriptor English which says pronounce things like this or not. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have so many kinds of pronunciation for a single word, right? So according to your school, according to your learner, you need to fix where are you on that. Are you going to be the rigid prescriptive teacher who says only the UK sounds? Or are you going to be somewhere in the middle where you say, I use the sounds that the world can understand. I would say that would be your best guide so that your child in your class does not feel like a misfit, misfit when he or she opens his or her mouth. Child should feel comfortable with the variety of English that you are in. There is no merit or demerit associated with any variety at all. Take it from me. It all depends upon the context in which you are using the language. The context, the use, the function. Okay. Yes, Richard. Okay. 
Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank You're you welcome. so much, Priya. It was an awesome session. We had so many questions and we dealt with very nicely with all of them in a beautiful way. So Thanks. dear audience, now it's time to say goodbye. But before that, there are a few important things that I want to share with you that is related to your certification. To avail the certificates for this session, you have given the important details in the chat box. You have to go to the link provided in the chat box, which will take you to the feedback form for the today's session. After filling in the feedback form, you will get the certification on your email ID. So that is a very quick way, going to the chat box, clicking on the link provided, filling up the feedback form and availing the certification. Second important thing which I want to tell you that today's session was more about how to improve your communication skills and how CC, that is Cambridge Communication App, could be so effective in helping us out in our daily routine, which was the question of many people over here, that how can we do on a daily basis? So now you have a helper friend for the CCA, which can guide you that how you can improve your English on a daily basis related to your general English skills and business English skills. Now, the beauty of this entire webinar, especially for these participants are that today you are aware that this session is this particular app CCA is absolutely free for you until August 31st. So I believe most of you and I believe all most of you would be availing this free services by Cambridge University Press. And for that, the link is also provided that how would you download the app on your Android phones. Also, the same would be mailed to you on your email ID once you fill up the feedback form. So I hope I have completed all the important pointers to be shared with you. And now I request our Dr. Preeti Bam, Preeti Sharda, who had given us this immense opportunity to be the part of today's session. It is their college. It is the role of Dr. Binu and Dr. Preeti that today we are able to have this collaborative session with this amazing college in Chandigarh Sector 42. So now I request Dr. Preeti to please share a vote of thanks with the audience. Uh, am I, can you see me? Now we can see you. Hi, Richa. Thank you so much. Just a sec. Hello, Difti ma'am. Thank you for being there. First of all, I would like to thank principal of my college, uh, Binu Dogra, Professor Binu Dogra, for granting me permission to do this series of webinar with Cambridge uh, University Press on communication skill. I express my grief a deep gratitude to respected madam for her moral support and guidance. My sincere thank to Cambridge University Press for collaborating with us in this series of webinars. My special thanks to Professor Dipti Gupta, the speaker of the day, and my dearest ma'am for uh, such an insightful and thought-provoking address and solving the queries of all the participants. Thank you, Madam, from core of my heart. Thank you, Ms. Priya Kapoor, for introducing us to the communication app of Cambridge University Press, to all the participants and to us. I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the faculty members of different colleges of Chandigarh who have joined this webinar. We are extremely grateful to you to be uh, part of this webinar. An event of this dimension cannot happen overnight. It requires meticulous planning and execution and an eye on details. I would like to thank all the team members of Cambridge University Press and my college for making it happen. My special thanks to Professor Puna Madhirwal, Vineet Mehra and Richa Bhatla for perfect coordination. Finally, I take this opportunity to extend our most sincere thanks to all the students who have turned up in such a great number. Actually, we got late to uh, announce this webinar, but I'm very happy to see the large number of participants attending this webinar. On behalf of PGDC 42 and Cambridge University Press, I extend my gratitude to all of you. Last but not the least, it is a privilege and a great joy for me to extend a vote of thanks to all those who have contributed in one or the other way to make this webinar a success. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for your kind words and thank you to this beautiful gathering today for attending this session and spending your valuable time to learn something in today's session. I would like to retreat my few points again before we say goodbye to each other. So dear audience, you had so many questions and we were very happy to take as many as possible. Still, the journey is not over. Your relationship with Cambridge University Press India sustains longer. So you can write to us anytime on India at the rate Cambridge Cambridge.org. This is our email ID where you can share your any query related to English or related to communication skill about today's session about CCA. So please feel free to write. The same email ID is also given to you on the chat box. Also, that um, discussed about two other dates in the session when Ms. Priya Kapoor was talking about CCA app. She discussed that we are also having sessions on 18th of this month and 20th of this month with two different topics related to communication skills by two different speakers. So we would like to have you there itself there as well so that we can again learn from each other with the exchange of thoughts and ideas. And beside this feedback journey you already know, as feedback for the webinar is important, so is the feedback for the for the app is important. Any organization, say, say Cambridge University Press India, can bring the best product for its audience, for the youths of the country, only when, when they get the right feedback from you. So your feedback is like precious, as precious as diamond for us. So please share your, download the app, use the app, share a genuine feedback, and we are ready to serve you again and again, all the time. Thank you so very much for your precious time to all the dignitaries present here, my back and support team and everybody in the press and in the institution sector 42, uh, Chandigarh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.